Hi guys, thanks for stopping out at Pete's Garage. You know, I've gotten a lot of comments on other engine build videos I've made about uh, the generality and uh, people are asking for more detail around each component of the engine. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go through an engine build right now and this is my Cobra engine that I've had built and already on a dyno for 20 hours. But I'm, I took it apart to do, do some machining to it. But I'm going to talk about each component and give you a little more detail so that when you're building your engine, you know what to check. And if you're not familiar with the machining nomenclature or what you should have done or what you should check as you're going along, I'm going to cover it for you in these videos. And let's first start talking about the block. Now, if you're rebuilding engine, you already have your block. If you're building a car, you want to change the engine, whatever you want to do, the most important or the most successful thing or the thing you can do to make your engine build successful is called planning. You want to plan it all out first. And the first thing you want to decide is what do you want to have this engine do? Is you want it for high performance? Do you want to get mileage? Do you want, are you towing something? Uh, are you trying to lift the front wheels off the ground? What are you trying to do with the engine? So planning is the key. And when you're planning, the first thing you need to do is make sure you get a block that will handle what you're trying to do, including nitrous. If you're going to put some juice to this thing, you want to make sure the block can handle the temperature, the horsepower, and is really strong enough to handle all of that instant torque and instant stress that's going to be pushed throughout the entire block. Now, as I said, if you, you're rebuilding an engine, you already have the block. Now, if you're choosing a block, you have a couple choices. It can either be cast iron or aluminum. Either is good, depending on what you're trying to do. You, you buy an aluminum block, it's going to be light. You get a cast iron one, it's going to be heavy, but can handle a little more stress. So, uh, picking your material, do a little research and find out what's best for your application and size block you're going to be using. Now, regardless of what you do, now if, you have, if you're rebuilding an engine, you have the block. If you're going to buy a block, if you're going to buy it brand new, uh, you're going to buy a, a finished block, ready to roll, aluminum or cast iron, or like this is the this is a used block. I, I bought a used block. This is a 1988 uh, Ford Windsor block, and I bought it from a place that recycles engine components. Now you can pay if you're going to build a, a, a motor, uh, you're going to build an FE motor or something like that. You could pay up to four or five thousand dollars just for the block, and that can get extremely expensive very very quick. Now the place I bought this from is called Buffalo Engine Components and what they do is they take vehicles that are, that are crushed or destroyed, they take the powertrain out, they take all the components apart, they save them and they sell them separately. I paid $150 for this block. This block was in excellent condition. Now you take risks buying a $150 block, sure there are, but you take risks buying an aluminum block or cast iron block uh, from somebody else, from a junkyard, even if you buy it brand new from a race, Summit Racing or Jags or wherever you buy it from, you're still a risk. Now, if you're rebuilding your engine, if you just bought a block, it doesn't matter. The first thing you want to have done is have it magna fluxed uh, for a cast iron or x-ray, aluminum. You want to check to make sure there aren't any cracks. There can't be any cracks anywhere in the block. If there are, it's scrap. Don't use it because it's going to fail. You're not going to be happy with it. If you're going to start, start out right. Start with a block that doesn't have any cracks in it. Uh, any good machine shop will be able to do that for you. You should be able to find a service that will x-ray an aluminum block to make sure there aren't any cracks on the internal passages, okay? So first thing you want to do, make sure the block is completely uh, crack-free, stress-free, there's no problems with it, look it over very closely, and then you're going to start with a good block. Now, if you get that done, even if you buy a brand new one, uh, and if you're re re getting your uh, engine rebuilt, if you're rebuilding that, or if you buy a used block like I bought, you want to have a few things checked. Now, the first thing, you want to have a minimum amount of things checked, like I said, for cracks. Then you want to have it checked for two things. You want to make sure that the crankshaft bore, I'm going to talk about this, about line boring. And you want to have the head deck che checked for flatness and squareness. Let's talk right now, uh, real quick, about line boring and why that's important. Okay, now... When you have the crank bore line board, what they're going to do is they're going to put all the caps on, the bearing caps on, they'll clamp them down to what the, whatever clamping is going to be, and if you have a girdle, have the girdle put on at that time. And what they're going to do is they're going to take a, a, a boring tool and they're going to run it all the way down all of the main bearing journals right here. So they're going to take a, a bore, and they're going to bore straight down the middle, and they're going to bore all those to make sure they're all the same size. Then they will hone it out 
to make sure that it's honed, so it's line honed. They're going to do, they're going to do this, and they're going to make sure that this entire uh, cavity or the where the crankshaft is going to sit, they want to make sure that this is perfectly square. It's not going to be off one direction or another. So you have it line board to make sure it's completely square to the face of the engine, and it's also completely 90 degrees to the uh, cylinders to make sure that you're not don't have any angles here. So that's number one. You have your you have your um, mains line board. Now what that's going to do for you is when they're bored and then they're honed out, they'll be honed out to a specific size. So you'll be able to buy your bearings to fit whatever you had it line board out to. Your crank is going to be different sizes. You're going to have to have your crank worked. So once you, after you, have, after you have your crank uh, machined down and cleaned up or if you buy a new crank you're going to be able to fit the bearing in here perfectly. You can buy all brand new bearings and you'll buy them all to size. You won't have to worry about turning each one down or turning journals down. You can have it all one size. That's an option, but there are other things you can do. So line boring is the next thing. The next thing you're going to do is want, you're going to want to have them uh, check the cam bore. Uh, they'll bore out the cam bore. And I would recommend having the machine shop put in your uh, cam bearings because they have special tools to make sure they're all in square and straight. You, can, you also want to have them clean it install all new plugs for the oil galley if they're threaded if not they're cup plugs and these are extremely important because if these leak you won't have enough oil pressure and the, the pressure oil pressure that comes through here that goes into the cam bearings and then ultimately goes down to the crankshaft and into all the, all the crank lube if these leak you won't have enough oil pressure they can blow out and there goes your engine you also have a, a threaded screw in here another uh, gun drilled hole that's done at the when it's cast and the, this is machined out and, and have the machine shop clean those uh, galleys and pl put those plugs in for you. That uh, will save you a lot of aggravation from having your, your motor blow up f for sudden loss of oil pressures. There's some in the front and some in the back. So you have your line bore done. Now the next thing you're going to have done is I'm going to take this motor and one handed try to turn this up like this. All right. That's not too bad. Now the next thing you want to do is have them deck. Check the deck. The head deck where the cylinder heads right here, the cylinder head sits right here and you want to have the deck checked. You want to have it checked for two things. You want to make sure it's, it's flat this way and you want to make sure it's flat front to back. So side to side and front to back. Perfectly square with the crankshaft. So as the crankshaft sits in there you want to make sure your head deck is square right here. Uh, now a couple things. If your head deck is not square and they need to square it up, how much they machine off of here is very important because as you machine your head deck surface, you're lowering the cylinder head in the cylinder bore. So if I were to take this and machine this down, the closer I uh, machine the cylinder head and the closer it gets to the piston, the higher the compression is going to be and the more octane gas you're going to need. So deciding how much you're going to cut off your head deck is important because you'll have to either compensate with one with the piston you're going to buy, connecting rods, whatever you're going to buy to compensate for that, or you're going to have to buy a cylinder head to match what you took off of the block, off of the head deck. So we had to, we're, going to have, we're going to have two things done by the machine shop, or three things right off the bat. We're going to have line, bore, and hone the crank with all the main bearings on it. We're going to have them uh, line, hone our crankshaft and install our crankshaft bearings, I'm sorry, our camshaft bearing, our cam, cam lobes and cam bearings. We're going to have them install our plugs, make sure all the old gala plugs don't leak. We're going to have them check the, the deck surface. We want the machine, the deck surface to make sure it's flat, both this direction and front to back, so that it's, it's not wavy, and so that the cylinder head clamps up, it's going to be clamped nice and flat. Those are, that's what we're going to have the machine shop do. Those are the basics that I would have a machine shop do. Now while you have your block at the machine shop, also have them check all of the cylinders. Check all of the cylinders to make sure they're round, and they have to be as round as possible. Uh, you're going to have to choose a piston and a ring to fit in your bore, and the most important thing is to make sure it's round. So they have uh, diameter, they have gauges they can put in here, bore gauges, and they'll spin it around and make sure it's round. If it's not round, have them machine the bores round. Very, very important. If it's not round, if it's oval shaped just a little bit, your pistons won't, uh, the rings won't seat right, the pistons will rattle, you get skirt slap, it'll be noisy, and it just will not operate right. So make sure you have the machine shop check all of the cylinders to make sure they're round. Then, after they machine all of the cylinders, after they're all nice and round, you have them hone out the block. And what they're going to do is they're going to put a crosshatch pattern in here, 
and the crosshatch pattern is going to help the brand new ring seat faster and seat fa uh, better. Uh, it's a requirement. You have to have a uh, hone to make sure it's a nice surface for the new piston rings. Uh, th this block doesn't, I have to re-hone re it because I'm putting new rings in here and I had 20 hours on it so the ring started to seat a little bit so I just got to clean it up a little bit but make sure you have that done. You can do it yourself if you know how to do it. You certainly can buy uh, a cylinder hone, put the cross hatch in there but since the machine shop has it, it's not that long. They can do it really quick and they make sure they do it right. So you're going to have them also machine your uh, bores and then they're going to hone it to make sure you have the cross hatch pattern. They can also check to make sure that the, the cylinder bore is 90 degrees to the crank so that when this is in there they can make sure they can put the hone in here and when they put the, the hone or when they, put, when they put the bore in there they can adjust and try and straighten out to make sure it's going to be perfectly 90 degrees to that crankshaft. Very important, have all your cylinders checked, have them bored and honed. One part that many people overlook are the lifter bores. They think the lifter bores are okay, you just take out the lifters and reuse them and, and just put the new ones in there and you're good to go. That is really not the case. You should have the lifter bores check, number one, to make sure they're the right size. Lifter bores can become oblong, out of shape, just like a cylinder. The lifter bore can become oval shaped, it can be oversized, it can be all different kinds of things. So you have them all checked and if, you, if they're out of, out of shape or out of size, have them corrected so that they're all the same size so you can buy one kind of lifter and drop them all in there. The machine shop can machine these out so that you can buy one set of lifters and they'll fit in there perfectly. So don't forget to have your lifter bores checked and uh, make sure that they're a size that will be common so you can just buy lifters and drop them right in. Now the last thing I would have the machine shop do after they take it apart, they're going to steam clean it or do something to uh, clean the motor before they machine it and what I would have them do is put in new freeze plugs or core plugs. They're going to change, pull out these core plugs, they're going to clean out the inside of the water jackets and just have them pop in new core plugs. They're cheap, doesn't take that long and if there's any rust on the outside there, it's going to start to leak eventually. So you pop out the core plugs, put in some new ones and that's about uh, all I'd have the machine shop do is replace those core plugs on an on a engine you're rebuilding and if you have a brand new engine you can leave them in there. Uh, make, just make sure, take a close look around the outside. If you look real close around the edges here, just make sure there isn't any rust starting. As long as there's no rust starting, you won't have any leaks. So, you can paint, either paint your block before you assemble it or after you assemble it. I prefer to paint it before because that way you don't get paint on all the gaskets. And it'll peel off the gaskets. It doesn't look as good. To me, it looks better if you paint it before you assemble it. Now, I painted this block with Eastwood's high temp ceramic engine paint. Uh, it's a lot better. It's, I'm going to say it's a thousand times better than rattle can spray paints simply because it's a two-part paint. It hardens. It's a beautiful shine. It's gorgeous and it's really uh, heat resistant and chemical resistant. And the nice thing about it, it's very durable, durable because it's a ceramic paint and actually has ceramic ch chips in the paint which makes it more, more durable than just a regular paint. And as you can see it puts a beautiful finish um, this is cast iron and it looks like it could be a um, aluminum block. It comes out so nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful product. And, and this is a Eastwood. This happens to be the dark Ford blue. And it's going to my Crowbar, so that's what I'm using the blue. So you can either paint it before or after you assemble it. So those are the basic things you need to do or have checked or have machined when you have a block that you buy, an engine you're rebuilding, even a new block that you're going to buy brand new one. I would still have it checked. Have a machine shop check it. It's worth maybe a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks to have it checked or to have a machine shop uh, professionally machine it. It's nice to think you can do this work yourself and I build engines all the time and I'll tell you right now it's not worth it. Get someone you can trust, ask around, find out who's a good machine shop in your area, take it to them, tell them what you want to have done and it should be fairly reasonable. Complete machining of a block, line honing, line boring the crank, putting in the crank bearings, uh, I'm sorry, cam bearings, installing the cam bearings, decking the cylinder heads where the cylinder heads go, checking all your lifter bores, putting in new plugs, core plugs, oil plugs, doing all that work should cost somewhere around between a thousand maybe twelve hundred bucks. So I got a hundred fifty dollar block, twelve hundred bucks worth of machining to it and it's uh, ready to go. It's as good as a brand new block and it's, re it's ready to assemble. All I did was paint it, do some detailing, check some things myself, and then ready to go. Spend the money. It's worth it to have it professionally done. Have it checked. No cracks. 
professional machining, you're going to be miles ahead and happier because you'll know while you're driving your car the engine's not going to blow up because something you overlooked. Have a professional check it out. That's just my opinion. That's what I have done on all the engines that I build, and I haven't had one blow up yet. So you go by, uh, by history and, and by experience. Trust the experts. Trust the machine shops. Trust the pros around your area. Talk to them. Talk about what they can do. Get some references. Talk to some people they have for some work done and see if they're happy with the work. And, and you should, be, should, do, should do pretty good. If, you, if they give you some references and you talk to them, you can be pretty positive. You're going to get the work done properly. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to give me a call. I'll see if I can answer them for you. If you, have, if you can email me if you like. You can text me, uh, and I'll answer as, as, as soon as I can. I really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you watching my videos, and, if you, and like I said, any questions, let me know. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.